Hey everyone, it's Ryan Lundquist with SacramentoAppraisalBlog.com and I'm really excited to share a template that I made to help export neighborhood data and quickly make about 10 or 12 graphs, okay? The goal is to create some images that could potentially be shared on social media, um, but really just to dig into neighborhoods for those with MLS access across the country and just get a sense of, well, what's happening with concessions? You know, what's happening with prices or square footage? Or, you know, we could look at different things. Now, these aren't the end all graphs. Um, they're not gonna solve all the problems in the world, but I've been using them in my appraisal reports sort of for supplementary research. And, and I, the way that I'm looking at them, I wanna kind of give you a window into what I'm doing and hope that they're helpful. So here's, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you what this template does. I wanna walk you through real quick the graphs that it creates, okay? Um, you can skip that part and go straight to the tutorial um, because then next I'm gonna show you how to make a custom export in MLS, how to get the data, and then how to fill out the template. I'm gonna go through a couple live examples just so you know this will be about 30 minutes or so, okay? Probably a little bit more. But, um, uh, and then I'll give you some tips for how to use this, okay? And how to think about graphs. Um, this is kind of a crash course. Um, I've been messing around with graphs for over a decade. And uh, anyway, I hope that it's helpful. Um, but anyway, this is uh, the East Sacramento neighborhood in Sacramento. And um, what I wanna show you is how to get all this information here. I have about six months worth of sales. And um, basically I go to export. I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but I'm going to imagine that I already exported some data. Here are six months worth of sales in East Sacramento. And here's what my template looks like. And then you basically scroll to the right and then I have all these graphs, okay? Now, you're gonna have to adjust some of these visuals, but um, let me show you what, what they look like. Um, and um, I think they're pretty cool. So here's one, it shows a price versus square footage. You can kind of see square footage on the X axis, price on the Y. And look, the, the higher the, the house, the larger the house, the higher the price. Okay, not a shocker, but still, it's good to see, especially for the owner who's like, I got a 900 square foot house and it's worth 4 million. And then you could pull up sales and just be like, well, really, you know, let's talk about that. Here's price per square foot versus um, square footage. Now, this is a really good visual, particularly in neighborhoods where houses are conforming. East Sacramento, there's a lot of custom stuff. So you could see like, Price per square foot doesn't change that much. Um, I'm gonna show you another example where it really, really changes. But again, this can be really valuable because sometimes people get hung up on price per square foot. Uh, concessions in the neighborhood in East Sac, you could see that here's a couple trends that first of all, concessions, it looks like under two and a half percent, the bulk of concessions in the market. Now look at all these zeros, like where sellers didn't give any concessions. That looks like the bulk of the market, but when they did happen, it's under two and a half percent besides this outlier. You could also see the higher the price, the less concessions there are, all right? And let's scroll over here, concessions, and here's the dollar amount. And basically here's the highest one, excuse me, um, about 22,000 in concessions. But you could see the bulk of the market is like probably under 10,000, under 5,000, where when concessions happen, they're not a dramatic price point, okay? Um, here's a sale like above 2 million and it had an $18,000 concession. And so um, look, the bulk of them don't have them, but sometimes they do, I think that's valuable. Here's concessions versus days on market. I think this is kind of cool because it just shows that like, um, in the first seven days, look at all these concessions happening. I think sometimes we're like, sellers are only giving concessions, you know, after 90 days or whatever, but here's an example where right away, sellers listen to the market, okay? And again, you can kind of see um, that, you know, deals are getting done, you know, and it's vastly under 2%, okay? Here's a different way to look at it. Um, past 180 days, um, the vast bulk of properties that are getting bid up, the first seven to 10 days. And then the longer properties are on the market, the lower they tend to sell from the original price. Okay, um, I think that's a cool visual. Number of offers. Now, if you're in Sacramento, you ha we have a field in our MLS for the number of offers. If you're not in Sacramento, you probably don't have this field. So you just might have to skip these graphs. But here's, let me show you first. Um, 
number of offers by price. And, you know, we can go two, three, four, five, like the vast bulk of the market is under five. Here's this outlier. The highest one had nine offers, you know, at 700,000. But you can kind of see like there, there's a lot more offers below 900,000. Um, but even like here's 1.6 million, you know, two offers. But you can kind of see that like above 2 million is not getting five offers. And so higher prices, a different dynamic. Could this help with seller expectations? Sure. Okay. Um, here's a different way to look at it. The number of offers by square footage. And again, you can kind of see under about 1,600 square feet that's the most aggressive portion of the market. And sure, that could have to do with price also. So it's related to the other graph. Here's an interesting one. You could see um, the sales price compared to the original price, the dollar amount. And um, you know, here's an outlier. Let's see, this one sold 195,000 above the original price. It's easy to look at that one. Oh my gosh, the market's going nuts. But the vast bulk of the market is really under 80,000 somewhere. It varies tremendously. Like here's one that went 5,000 above the asking price, right? And so the story is not the same everywhere, but look at the ones that went below. You know, here's the lowest one. It sold $190,000 below the original price. Okay, it was probably priced about 200K too high, right? And so the story is not the same everywhere. Instead of the dollar amount, we can look at the same data set as a percentage, okay? And you could see that the percentages are all over the place, um, above and below. And again, this, this graph right here might look different depending on the neighborhood, depending on the price point you pull. And so some of these graphs are gonna be meaningful in some neighborhoods and some of them you're like, gosh, that doesn't tell me anything. And so we have to be able to interpret them, okay? Sales price to original list price uh, versus square footage. And you can kind of see this trend line goes, starts to go down a little bit, but basically, you know, about 1600 square feet, it looks like the market's more aggressive and then it gets slightly less aggressive the higher we go, okay? Where properties just aren't getting bid up, you know, at the $2 million or the, you know, 3000 square foot homes that are probably, you know, 2 million, okay? Um, here's price per bedroom count. And you can kind of see that prices get higher the more bedrooms we have. All right. Now, sometimes two and three bedrooms really might be selling at the same level if they're the same square footage. But really, the higher bedroom account probably speaks to a larger square footage. Here's a different way to look at it. Price per square foot versus bedroom count. And um, you can kind of see generally look at the two bedrooms all of a sudden have a higher price per square foot because a lot of these units are smaller in size. And remember, smaller units tend to have a higher price per square foot. Okay, so just kind of an interesting way to see the market. Is that revolutionary? No, I don't think so. Could it be more useful in some neighborhoods? Sure. Um, sales price to original list price versus price in ESAC. And so you can kind of see that properties under 900,000, it's more aggressive. And then look, you know, slowly we start to see properties selling, um, you know, closer or below the original price, the higher that you get, okay? Now look, there's some properties under 900 that are getting bid up and some that are selling below. So it's hit and miss. It probably depends on original price. But I like to show people the the story isn't the same in every single property. OK, um, here's a cool one. First, OK, let me show you this and then we'll end on, I think, the one that's cool. This is price per lot size in East Sac. And I don't know if this is revolutionary, but one thing interesting thing about East Sac is it. You know, a, a lot that's like 0.2 acres is actually really, really big in East Sac um, because most units are well under 1.5. And so generally speaking, the larger the lot size, the higher we're gonna go in price. Um, you know, but not always. What gets interesting though is when you put properties on acreage here, then sometimes the highest sales might be, you know, one acre. And then you're like, wow, those that extra acreage, five acres, they're gonna, it's gonna sell for five times more. But then you look at the stats and you're like, oh, maybe it's not, you know, five times more. Okay. The last one, which I think is kind of cool, here's a scatter graph. These are all scatter graphs. You can see price by year built in ESAC. And here are brand new homes or uh, newer. Excuse me, man, I'm so tired. I'm sorry to be yawning. Oh my gosh, it's been a busy week. Um, and you can see that here's the newer stuff, but it's actually, look, it's the older stuff that's tending to sell at the very highest prices in the market. The stuff built in the 20s, you know, in the Fab 40s neighborhood in East Sac, you know, not a shocker. And so in some neighborhoods, a graph like this, you might pull properties and go, wow, 
there's a difference in units that were built in the 1970s compared to the 1950s. And, you know, and or sometimes like here's a little infill subdivision within a larger neighborhood. And maybe that infill subdivision is selling for way more. Maybe it's less. And so it just helps us kind of wrap our mind around age. OK, and so I'm going to go ahead and get down. And so right now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and show you how I got this export. OK. Now, um, in RMLS in Sacramento, you go to admin and then you go to custom export setup. Now, if you're not in Sacramento, then you, you might have to um, poke around your MLS, figure out how to do this or contact MLS support and say, hey, how do I set up a custom export? Now, I want to show you um, this is exactly the order of the export. And what you're doing, you're setting up an export from 1 to 13 in the exact order. If you get these wrong, the spreadsheet won't work. And so I want you to, to be really careful about getting this order. So maybe take a screenshot right now, and just so you have that on the side. But I'll walk through everything. And so what you want to do is you want to go to Create Export. And then you can call it, um, you know, It's My Export. Um, click Save. And then... I'm going to get to choose, come on. Oh, processing my request, I just need to be patient. Then I'm gonna to get to choose the order. And remember, like I said, here's the exact order and I'm gonna go through this. So address full is the first thing we want to put in there. So I click that, can I, okay, no, I can't. Uh, and then I go to um, add, okay, great. And then I go to close date. It's in alphabetical order in our MLS. Um, hopefully your MLS has um, everything in the same category. It should be uniform, but if it's not, if it's called something else, you're gonna have to figure out what it is in your area that corresponds to mine, okay? Uh, closed price is what we want next. Um, approximate square footage is what we want afterwards. Okay, and then cumulative days on market, CDOM. Okay, there we go. Bedrooms and then bathrooms. Okay, bedrooms, there we go. Bathrooms and then lot size and then price per square foot. Make sure you get lot size acres. Okay, not lot size square um, square foot. Okay, and then price per square foot. Okay, and then year built. Okay, and then original price. All right, two more concessions amount. Okay, not uh, concessions or concession comments, concessions amount, okay? And the last one is the number of offers. If you're not in the Sacramento area, don't worry about this one because the spreadsheet will still work if you don't have this one. But if you are in Sacramento, um, you know, definitely get this number of offers. Okay, and so let's make sure we got our list right. Should be 13 things and it should be, um, Let's see, address full, close date, close price, approximate square footage, cumulative days on market, bedrooms, bathrooms. Um, let's see, lot size acres, price per square foot, year built, original price, concessions amount, number of offers. Okay, we got it. And then I want to click save. Bam, there we go. Now let's set up a custom export and let's go to a particular neighborhood. How about um, Arden Manor? And in MLS, you can actually save neighborhoods, and that's what I did here. Um, if you don't know how to do that, highly, highly recommend. And I want to just kind of limit data. I don't want it to be too far. So I'm going to go um, about the past six months. Uh, there's only 25 sales here. I mean, we'll see how meaningful that is. But basically, what I want to show you now is how to use the spreadsheet and export data into it. Okay, and so here we go. All right, so I'm going to show you this right here is what the spreadsheet looks like. You need to get the data, paste it in here, and right now the graphs are blank. Okay, now you can download this on my blog. It has the link in the comments on where you download this, but basically, 
let's sh show how to get the data and then how to paste it in. This is a piece of cake, okay? So I have my data selected past six months. Um, I'm single family homes. Um, I did not choose condos. If you're in a market where condos are relevant, definitely choose condos. Like if I was in San Francisco, I would probably be exporting condos also. I don't do that. There are literally no condos in the neighborhood, but um, you know, you just have to be aware, especially if you're exporting from a zip code instead, and you know, just kind of be aware of your what you're getting in there. So all I do, look, map search, I click export, and then I'm going to get to choose the spreadsheet, and then I go down here. I got a bunch of different spreadsheets. What did I call it? It's my export. You go to submit, I'm gonna click on that one. Okay. And I want to show you what it looks like. And I can get the data in two ways. I can take my mouse and I can highlight it all and push Control C. And that's copy. Oops. Okay, I jacked something up there. Um, or I can take my mouse um, and put it over A2. And then I scroll all the way over to the last column in M. And then I push Control Shift down. Okay, and that highlights everything. Then push Control C. Okay, control C copies it, and then here's my template, and then look, look, I've just put my mouse right there, click on the cell, and then control V is the shortcut, and that put all of my sales in Arden Manor. Then I scroll over, and then voila, it has populated all these graphs. Now, here's the bummer, is that these graphs aren't ready for um, data. Now, real quick, oh shoot, let me back up. Um, I'm just gonna pretend like um, what I meant to show you. Let me delete that real quick. And what I want you to do very first, the very first thing I want you to do is I want you to go and put your website on each and every graph, okay? Your website right here, your website right there, okay? In each and every graph. And then what I want you to do after that, I want you to right click on main, and then I want you to go to move or copy, and then you go to create a copy of main, and then boom. And so that way you have, um, we're gonna call this one, um, Arden Manor, but then that way you have another template that's ready to go. Okay, in fact, I'm just gonna create another one too, just while we're at it, in case um, we don't uh, we don't remember to do that, because you can have like you know 20, 30 templates, however many you want on this one spreadsheet. Okay, and so anyway, let's go back to Arden Manor, and what I'm gonna do again, let me just cut and paste the data again here. Okay, um, I'm gonna copy that again, and then. Paste. Okay, there we go. All right, so I was going to say the bummer part is that you're going to have to adjust the y-axis and x-axis. Um, you do this once for your art and manner template, and then pretty much you can continue to not have to make adjustments unless prices change or square footage or something. But, you know, I kind of look and I know that, you know, this is the highest sale, largest size in the neighborhood, 2,100 square feet. It looks like 900 square feet as small. So I might double click on the access and... Let me just say, <coughs> excuse me, 850. And, you know, I can kind of change the grid to be 200, um, the grid lines and, you know, whatever I want, I can change the Y axis here by double clicking. And, you know, maybe I'll take that down to 600, um, you know, or 650 or something. And so I could change the title by clicking in there. And then maybe I could put Arden, Arden Manor Sales. And then I could put you know, past 180 days there. Um, I know it's technically not 180, but it's close enough. And then what I want to do down here is probably put a date on the graph just so people know when this data was pulled. Okay. Now, if you would, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not sharing this online, it doesn't matter. Like you don't change any of this. If it's just for research in the background, who cares what any of the titles say? Okay. But this basically shows, you know, square footage and, you know, price and what's happening in the neighborhood. There's honestly not very many sales. I'm guessing if we had uh, more sales, they would kind of fill in here and show higher prices, all right? Um, now here's an interesting one because this shows price per square foot and I'm going to, see, change that. Okay, and then change the X axis. I'm clicking on that. Let's go 800. Okay, fantastic. I could change all these titles and everything, but here's what I like in a conforming neighborhood. You can see that the smaller homes have a much higher price per square foot. And then look what happens. The, the, the larger the home gets, 
the lower the price per square foot. Okay, I really, really like this because, you know, homeboy at 2,000 square feet, he's like, I want to use 450 price per square foot to price my house. But you could show a graph like this and be like, you know, the homes that are showing a price per square foot at that level, they're about 900 square feet, right? Um, in Art Manor, I could change around this graph. Um, it looks like concessions are, um, let me click on the y-axis. They're not topping out above 4%. And so I'm going to change that. I'm going to change the y-axis. Um, oops, what I what I do there? Okay. And so do you see? I just want it to be uh, readable, and I could change the grid lines down here. Let me see. Um, oops. There we go. Uh, 50 is a little too tight. It just gets too jumbled. But um, okay, so here we see that under 3% is the name of the game. There are some properties that didn't have any concessions, but under 3% is what I would coach sellers to be like, hey, if a buyer needs something, it's going to be under 3%. But look, sometimes it's under 1%. Okay. Um, similar dynamic here. I could click on the access. The highest sale was $16,000. I'm just going to say 20. And you can kind of see that, you know, um, a lot of properties are under uh, 10,000. You know, the bulk of them are under 10,000. So again, sellers are, you know, and buyers are prepared for the market that actually exists. And look, here's the ones they had zero concessions. Um, I could uh, click on the y-axis. Let's get that to 4%. But again, we see the, the properties that are getting bid up. It's happening in the first 14 days on bulk the highest um, getting bid up, okay? Um, sometimes, like, here's some properties that got bid up 2% after almost 50 days, okay? So it's hit and miss, um, but we just want to be aware. Um, mostly everything is going above the list price, but that's happening within the first seven days, right? And again, I could change, you know, the title, you know, the days, um, all that stuff. Um, offers by square footage, um, not a lot of change there, but... Um, Let's look at this in Art and Manor real quick. Um, God, why is it at 1.4 million? Let's uh, let's change that. We don't need that. Okay, and then okay, let's change some things around. Oops. Okay. We could truncate, truncate this more if we want, but you can see that the highest offer was 16. And so let me just get that to 17. Let me change that to one. And look, the bulk of offers, like here are ones that had seven. These are total outliers at 12 and 16. So just what we want to be aware of, it looks like the bulk, you know, if they're going to get multiple offers, it's two to four and some of your outliers. So, you know, just something to pay attention to. Um, you know, it looks like here's their one Lone Ranger that went 16% above, but the bulk of properties are, you, it looks like most of them are lower than 5 or 6%, okay? If you're going to go below in the neighborhood, it's usually about 5% below with some outliers, but <clears throat> you're not going more than 10%, okay? Now, if you were priced 20% high, well, guess what? That one's going to go way lower, okay? Um, here's Arden Manor, <coughs> and... Let me adjust that. And so here's a property that went 90,000 over asking. Okay, the bulk though are going about 40,000 over asking at most other than this outlier. And when they're selling below, it's really about 20,000 below with some outliers um, at additional amounts with here's one that went 45 below. And so something that we want to watch, okay? Price for, you know, per bedroom count, um, uh, let's see, price for uh, price for square foot. I'll let you mess with that. Um, sometimes I look at these graphs. I'm like, eh, there's nothing in this neighborhood that really speaks to me. Like even this one in Arden Manor, I feel like this is a nothing burger. It might be because there's not that much data. There's only 25 sales. But sometimes we're like, gosh, I really in this spreadsheet, I love these two graphs, and you know, but gosh, these five ones suck. You know, or, or whatever we think. Okay. And again, you know, nothing too crazy here. Here's the interesting art and manner. Can you tell that they're basically all the same year? <laughs> um, and it's a nothing burger with lot size, okay? 
Now, what I want to do, I'll push save, but here's a different template we made, and uh, let's call this one Folsom, because I want to just export an entire city so that you can see you know, what's going on here. And so let's go to MLS, and let's do a standard search this time. Uh, is this helpful? I hope it's cool. Um, I love stuff like this. I've really been enjoying having this um, in the background um, in uh, on my appraisals. And I'm gonna go 90 days in Folsom. Let me see. Um, what we wanna do, let's check how many seals there are. Oh, 164, okay, cool. That's gonna be plenty. Okay, we wanna go to export, but I've really been enjoying this in, on, on my desktop, okay? And then we go down and what do we call this? Um, it's my export, go to submit. And then every time that I export this, it's going to show this data in the format that we need for um, pasting it into that um, profile or the, the spreadsheet. Okay, and so here we go. Here's the data. And I'm going to um, click on A2 and then uh, go all the way across. And I do the um, shortcut Control Shift down. That highlights all 164. Control C because that's copying it. And then here's my spreadsheet. And again, look, I've called this Folsom. I'm gonna go right in A5, boom, Control V, and then that, um, here's all my data, okay? And again, I like looking at it, just what's going on with concessions. Like even if you don't like the graphs, maybe just look at some stuff. But then I scrolled over and it's gonna be the same thing where in Folsom, I'm gonna have to experiment to be like, okay, where do I set the, um, the Y axis and the X axis, okay? And I know that's a pain, but hey, you know what? Um, it's been worth it to me. I've been actually including these in appraisal reports lately. Um, and I save files with different neighborhoods because if I get the parameters right, then you know I don't have to make them again, okay? Um, now I'm gonna go to 4,700, I think that'll do it. Um, and then I'm gonna go to 800 there. And then let's click on the Y axis. Um, let's see, 2.3 million maybe, no. Um, okay, highest sale lately, uh, closer to 1.85, so let's just go to 1.9. Okay, perfect. Um, and let's click on the x-axis again, because that, that's a little too crowded. Okay, so we did 400 for the grid lines, and that's fine. But I like this. This is cool, because you can kind of see that the higher the price, the um, larger or the, the excuse me the higher the square footage the higher the price but we it's interesting because it looks like there's all these maybe conforming homes and then you just have these super custom ones most likely um, now Folsom let's look at price per square foot and I already know that um, I think I did that for 4700 if I'm not if I'm remembering right um, and then that was 800 and then I think we changed the grid lines to 300 perfect and let's go to uh, 550. Okay, now what we wanna do in Folsom, look, do you see how we're, we see that this trend going on? The larger the houses get, then we tend to see a lower price per square foot. But what happens here is that you have all these custom homes that are, that they look like that, okay, they sort of defy what it looks like should happen because it looks like this line should keep going down and the price per square foot should be way down here. but then you have all these custom places with views and stuff. And so it's just a good reminder that this trend might look different in, in various neighborhoods, but, um, you know, but, you know, something you want to keep in mind. Now I could double click on the, um, the trend line and I could try to get it to look a little different because I kind of feel like it's not really resembling, um, <coughs> excuse me, what, what the line looks like. Like I, I like that one a little bit better. It's not perfect, but you're going to have to kind of play with the trend line sometimes. Uh, concessions by price point. Again, you know, I, I adjust my access here. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm just all over the place, just uh, coughing. Okay, no, we need to do that 300. And again, <coughs> we see lower price points tend to have more concessions, but this kind of gives us a clue that the vast bulk of concessions are actually under 2%. And then you start to see outliers between three and five. There's not that many, okay? And again, we could all adjust our graphs. You know, I can <coughs> kind of go on and on. And we'll see what's meaningful here in Folsom, okay? Let's look at the number of offers, actually. Uh, 
Okay, look at here's our outlier at 19. <laughs> and we could actually go, let's just see, are there any higher? No, there's not. Okay. And so I went 19. And maybe if I want to see the graph a little bit better, I'm just going to go to 11 just to kind of see the trend a little bit more. Sometimes we zoom in and it's helpful. But you can kind of see that look like above four, like these are starting to be outliers. Most of the market gets four or less. Here's a bunch with, with one. Okay. And so, but again, we kind of see, look, the higher the price, the fewer, the less offers there are. Okay, generally, all right? Um, and then we can see offers by square footage. Um, this is kind of all over the place, but you can see that under 2,600 square feet, a lot more offers, okay? Granted, that's probably where the bulk of the properties are, okay? Um, and and look, we could, you know, milk this data and kind of figure out, um, you know, what's what's helpful and what's not, but but again, like we, we kind of want to look at initial glance at Folsom. It looks like there's a lot that has been overpriced that's gone below the original list price. Interesting to see, right? And so we want sellers to be prepared, okay? And a lot, even it's at lower prices. Look at the lower prices. It, it just, this to me, I look at this initially and go, hmm, that's interesting. It tells me that sellers are coming out the gate probably too high. Um, and here's a different way to look at the same trend, um, a percentage instead. Um, and let's see here. And so you can see here's some outliers. This one went 18% um, above or 19%. But the vast bulk of properties, if they go above, they're going to go maybe 5% or so. Okay, or just a couple percent sometimes. But again, it looks like the bulk in Folsom has gone below. Now, if you want to double check, you could click on this and go, have any gone below 20%? And, you know, let's just click, put a nine there. This will be 90% below. Okay, then here's one that went 23%. And so that's just a sign that we can have our graph at 25 if we want, okay? Um, and let's see if there's anything going on with square footage. I'm gonna change that to 47. Okay, so here's something interesting in Folsom. Um, we can kind of see that the larger we get in square footage, the lower we go from the original price. Okay, you can kind of see that more aggressive at, at lower priced homes, or <laughs> excuse me, uh, lower square footage, which are probably lower priced. And so, again, we just want to be in touch with the market that actually exists. Okay, let's look at this. All right, so price per bedroom count, two to five bedrooms. And we could see that higher prices for more bedrooms, um, you know, not so much with three, <laughs> but that could be a lack of three bedroom sales lately. Like, let's not overthink this. And sometimes it could be like, hey, what if this is um, a 55 plus community? Like, we got to be really aware of the data that we're pulling, um, you know, but you know, something to think about. Sometimes we see a range of value from four bedrooms, um, you know, but again, the larger homes probably have a higher square footage. So is it the bedroom count or is it the square footage? Uh, price per square foot in bedrooms. Um, let's look at this. Generally speaking, we see smaller amounts, um, you know, or the larger the home gets, the lower the price per square foot. Okay, so something to keep in mind. I find that price per square foot is a really big issue, and sometimes that seller with that five bedroom is going to be like, I want to price according to a two bedroom um, house, uh, the price per square foot. And sometimes that's a real, real mistake. Okay, um, and sales price to original list price in the neighborhood based on just price. Um, let's look at that. All right, and yeah, we kind of see here's the market that's more aggressive. Most aggressive, um, I would say, under 600,000, hands down. The higher you go, it's not that under 600,000 trend, all right? And then I think I got that already. Um, lot size in Folsom. And oops, okay, let's see here. Let me add one extra zero. All right, and I wonder what the highest lot size is in Folsom. I wonder, do we have anything on acreage? Okay, let me see, 0.77. Okay, and so let's just say 0.8 here. All right, 
And so um, my trend line's a little wonky. I could try to you know mess with that if I want. That that one looks about right because it looks it, it resembles what's going on. Um, and let me see. I I should really change this to you know 1.8 for the most part. But we kind of see that yeah. I mean higher more lot size generally has higher prices, but I mean not always in every situation. It's going to come down to the neighborhood. You know hands down. Um, you're built. I'm really curious and fulsome what, what we see here. So, oops. Okay, come on. Okay, my stupid camera is getting in the way. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry, everyone. Okay, and then let's see, 1947, all right, great. And so let's click on, actually, we'll click on the y-axis and just do it from 1945. All right, so in Folsom, do you see how we see older properties built in the 70s and before? They're clearly selling at lower prices. And again, this might have to do with size, um, could have to do with neighborhood too, but Look at the new stuff. The brand new stuff is tending to compete at higher levels, but it's really the stuff built around 2005 and onward. That's the premium stuff. And really, you know, we could look to um, a couple different neighborhoods in Folsom, and that makes perfect sense for those that are in the market. OK, now we could go on and on. And, you know, this one, um, you know, let's go to move copy. And let's make um, let's make another copy, and we could go on and on. We could do zip code, we could do whole entire counties. We want to, you know, click save. But let me show you real quick one other thing. Um, here's a Placer County uh, properties above one million. I just wanted to show you that sometimes you can do it just in a price range in a whole county. Um, these were just November sales, and Imagine if you wanted to pull above a million in a particular county every single month, then here's the cool part. If it was just Placer, all my graphs are made. The only thing I have to change is the month and then the data I export. But look at this one. I mean, you have total outliers around 6,000 square feet. Um, price per square foot is insane here for these ones. These are probably teardowns, you know, tiny homes at about 1,000 square feet. That's why they have a freaking high price per square foot. You can see what's going on with concessions. Um, I think there's a lot of interesting thing. Like here's a concession at 50,000. The bulk of concessions are between one and 1.4 million that are below $10,000, right? Um, days on market, you know, I don't know. So anyway, you could see it, um, you know, by, uh, by price point. And here's the interesting one. Like look at above a million in Placer this month. Almost everything went below the original price. But if you're going to go above, it's basically like somewhere around $35,000 or less above the original price. Other than, whoa, what happened with this one? Went $200,000 above the market so hot? No, this one was probably priced really low. Okay. Um, you know, it was a high dollar sale around $2.5 million. It got bid up. Okay. Um, but again, we kind of like look through all these and some graphs we might be like, wow, that's really telling. And other graphs are like, gosh, that doesn't say anything at all. OK, and so it's going to vary by the graph. Um, OK, so a couple things, uh, if I could show you real quick, um, let's see, how do you save these graphs? Um, let's go to one of my favorite ones. Um, let's just go to this one. Okay, so I can put, I can left click on this blank space and I go to control C and what I can do is I can open up uh, Microsoft Paint and then I push control V and then um, I just need to go to save and save the graph on my desktop. Okay, that's one way to do it. Or what we can do is we can go and um, we can take, uh, let's, let's click in the cells here. And by the way, what we can do, what I should here is go to view and grid lines. Don't have any grid lines there if you, if you don't want, that'll make it easier. Um, might make it more complicated to do the data. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, and I can go to um, my snipping tool, I go to new, and then I just try to get it without getting the grid lines on there, okay? All right, and then it pulls it up and then voila, there it is. I save it to my desktop, 
all right? Um, piece of cake, okay? Let me exit out of there. Um, some last closing thoughts, though, about graphs that um, I put in the instructions, um, the instructions tab. Um, I just want to say that you're in charge, so you have to figure out if there's enough information to be credible when you share a graph. Just because there's a graph doesn't mean it's going to be useful to share, and so you are in charge. If you are confused, don't share it because chances are people are going to be confused, okay? Um, so is there enough information? You need enough data to be meaningful, but um, multiple years does not work on this spreadsheet because this spreadsheet is really designed probably past, you know, a couple quarters. Um, it might be really useful all of 2023 or all of one year, but I mean, we have to be careful if the market has changed drastically for the from the beginning to the end. Um, it, it'd be hot mess with a couple years. Don't do that with this type of visual. This spreadsheet will hold up to 2,500 sales. Um, you could change it to hold however many you want, Excel will handle. Um, 2,500 is probably going to be too many on most of the graphs, but experiment. See what happens when you take the past 90 days in, in a neighborhood with it's really big, okay? You might see some interesting trends, um, but if it's only five sales in a neighborhood, then maybe you need to redefine your neighborhood. Um, or sometimes some graphs you're like, guy, it's just not meaningful. Okay. Um, I would say try doing it by the neighborhood, zip code, or portions of an entire county. You could go like all FHA sales in South Sac um, Sacramento. It could be all sales under 500,000. Um, it could be all cash sales, everything above a million, like whatever you want to show, it's kind of up to you. Um, you know, follow your curiosity. Sometimes the trend lines can get wonky. So remember, double click on those lines and don't um, and see if you can adjust them by picking different categories. Um, and if the line just doesn't look right, then maybe you just delete the line. OK, the, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, you know, to start out, definitely put your website on here. You want people on whatever visuals you create, you want them to know um, how to get a hold of you. You want them to know what they're looking at and to be able to say what's going on. Um, customize the graphs. If you always say past 90 days in that little top portion, then you never have to update it. Okay, if it's always past 90 days, then just put a little date at the very bottom. That way people know when they're looking at. Okay, and so if you can minimize the work you have involved in various neighborhoods, fantastic. Okay, um, and the ones that I'm using in my appraisal reports, I'm just, they just all say neighborhood because I don't have to even give the, a title because they're going in a report that already talks about where the location is. Um, and I'd say I typically only include single family detached units instead of condos. The condos tend to water down the data because they're usually lower prices, um, more cash, um, often uh, more foreclosures if there's foreclosures going on and um, not much of an issue in today's world. But um, if you're in a market like San Francisco, yeah, probably include the condos. But otherwise, um, just make sure that you're communicating clearly to your reader what is there. And so if you are going to include condos, then um, what I suggest doing is um, on the bottom, you're going to have to change square footage, single family um, sales, no condos or with condos. You're going to have to change that on each graph. Okay. And do that first in your very first template before you export anything or import anything, because in that way, every copy you make of this will, um, will be right. So um, anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, download this form according to the instructions. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, happy graph making. Um, let's visualize neighborhoods and just try to understand what the market's doing and be storytellers of value. Hey, thanks everyone.